Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I've just been clearing old video stuff out of a hard drive and I found this video that I made back in 2015 about the Roland Aera range of products, or as I keep calling it in this video, uh, Iara, right? Um, but I never put it on YouTube, so here it is. Um, it explains the Aera range of products at the time, all of which are still available, um, and because Roland's web pages are such a disaster, um, I basically pieced together everything to explain how all the components work individually and also the different ways they can be configured together, which is incredibly clever. Now, to make sure I got the information right, at the time I called Roland's product team and had a few discussions with them, so I've got the information down correct. Okay, So this is the Roland Aero range. Uh, this video was made in 2015 and then at the end I'm going to add on an extra bit showing you the new stuff that's been introduced into the range since then and I think you'll find this really interesting. Okay guys here is the Roland Aera system and I'm going to explain it to you. The core components were brought out in the second half of last year so it's fairly new. The mixer was brought out quite recently. Um, so with new stuff coming out I've decided to make this video um, because Roland's web pages are, to be honest, really bad from the point of view of just understanding what the components are, how they fit together, what they do, and how they can be configured. And that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to do you a summary of the IR range, okay, so you understand what it is and how it all works, right? Sure. Let's start by looking at this stock image from Roland's website. This is the core of the IRA system range. Okay. At the top you have the synth. This is the keyboard version of the synth, but you can get the rack modular version as well. All right. Now just to say, the synth very much emphasizes back to the old school. Very limited polyphony, um, two oscillator with a sub and noise oscillator. I do believe though that the oscillators can load stacked waveforms uh, models to do big fat sawtooth things. So it'll do modern sounds, but really the emphasis here is about getting back to the old school synthesis. All right. Um, it's this or the rack version, a completely proper hardware synths. Standalone, they don't need to be connected to a computer, they're proper synths, but you can connect them to a computer. Okay, more on that in a bit. Below that is the TRH drum box, Roland's classic drum boxes brought up to date. It does 808, 909, and now it also does 707 and 727. You've got real TR style sequencing, but it's all brought up to date. So you can mix and match drums to build composite kits. You can put delay and reverb effects per step using the TR sequencer, and then choose which drums are affected on those steps. You've got other effects built in. Um, you can even process incoming audio. It's got two line inputs on the back, uh, and you can do no um, side chain effects you can sequence side chain effects on incoming audio, etc. All right. So that's your drums. Again, a completely standalone hardware drum box. It does not need to be connected to a computer, but you can connect it to a computer. More on that in a bit. Then here we've got the TB3. This is Roland's new take on the classic 303 bass line. It imitates the bass line, but there's a whole bunch of presets to, for, for all other types of 303 type sounds big honking distorted ones, overdriven ones, etc, etc. It's got some built-in effects. You can program in the classic way. This huge touchpad on the front front functions to um, do all sorts of different things, like the, uh, programming in the steps. Um, it's used to do the envelope mod rather than a, 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 a pot, that a control. It does pitch and other things, and it's used to arrange your pattern orders, etc, etc. Both of these do last step and all that, and uh, you've got shuffle and everything as well, right? Again, this is hardware, it doesn't need to be connected to a computer. And then here we've got the VT3 vocal transformer or effect unit. It's got a mic socket on the back, it does vocoding effects, robot voice effects, uh, auto-tune type effects, it's got effects built in, reverb, etc. Yeah, that's that, right? And then at the bottom we've got the mixer, the MX1. Now this is an 18 channel USB mixer, right? Uh, it also, I haven't checked out how it does it, but it also says that it will function as a, a workstation controller, a DAW controller. It's 18 channels 
and it's got a built-in TR star sequencer right so you can make sequenced effects right now you can do three different types of sequenced effect filter sidechain and slicer effects right and every single one of the 18 channels can have its own unique sequence with one of those three effects configured in a certain way so every single channel can have its own TR style sequenced effect on it and they can be dropped in and out it's got master effects as well that channels can be uh, sent to it's even got real auxiliary analog uh, send and returns on the back it's got a certain amount of DJ queuing type things it can do there's headphone socket on the back and, and a pair of analog master outs um, and it functions in two modes in mode one it becomes a USB mixer you plug it in with the um, USB connector to your computer and 18 streams 18 channels of audio can be sent into the mixer from your DAW at the same time the six analog inputs at the back can feed into your DAW All right that's one mode it works in right the other mode that it works in is as a sort of controller and center mixer hub for this whole IRA system if you're doing live performance now all these four hardware units the synth whether in rack or keyboard form the drum box the, the bass line and the vocal effect unit they all work standalone they've all got real MIDI and out but they've all got a USB connector now if you've got the mixer and this these four units to do a live performance with then you put it into that performance mode or mix mode or whatever they call it and let's look at the back of the uh, mixer here and you've got these four IARA only USB sockets now you connect the synth the drum box the 303 or the TB3 as it's called now and the vocal unit into these this provides the MIDI clock to those units and it streams their audio in to the channels of the mixer so two channels for each of those so there's your eight channels to each for the four units coming in then the, you've got the six analog inputs so you've got eight inputs here six inputs here that's 14 then you can bring in a digital stereo pair making 16 inputs and then if you connect your computer you can bring in two channels from your DAW to make the last two channels 17 and 18 so when it's in that live performance mode your IR units connect here this provides audio and clock for them coming uh, audio coming in and clock six analog inputs two digital inputs and two streams from your DAW then you've got your two analog outs to go to front of house headphone socket for the queuing stuff and you've also got these two auxiliary send and returns right okay and that's what that does now here is the entire IRR range the keyboard in synth or modular rack form this can also sit on a tabletop right now if you've got the modular, modular rack synth there are four effects units available for it torcedo distortion blit razor modular crusher demora modular delay and scooper modular scatter Okay, and you can patch those in to the rack synth. These four effects, unit can, effects units can be internally configured in different ways using the IARA modular customizer. Let's quickly look at that. All the four effects units have a USB connector on the back and you can run this um, IARA modularized uh, customizer on your Windows or Mac and then you connect the unit to it and look you can configure the effect in terms of what its sockets are doing etc etc patch it all in different ways but this also runs on Android or iOS okay and on the USB socket on the back of these is like a small size socket that's capable of being used with um, a small USB type connector that can be used with a, a tablet or a phone or something like that you know but obviously you get a, uh, an adapter type and you can plug it to your desktop as well right so that's the four effects units that work with the modular rack synth okay there's the mixer there's the drum box there's the 303 there's the vocal thing and for, there's a sync box you can get as well okay which has got USB and MIDI but it provides DIN sync and CV gates so if you want to bring any old school bits of gear into your performance right and at the bottom there's the expansion for the 
707 and 727 for the TR8 drum box. Now let's just look at this drum box. Um, I've got a picture of the back of it here. Now the drum box, it's interesting. You can use it as part of that IR system plugged into the mixer and it gets its clock from the mixer. But it can be used completely standalone as a piece of hardware. But it's got two analog inputs here, right? Then it's got the phone socket, analog left, right, out, and there's a pair of assignable outs that any two drums you choose can be assigned to, right? Usually probably the kick and snare. And USB. Now this could be used standalone. But if you connect it to your DAW via USB, then 12 channels of drums are streamed via USB into your workstation on their own channels as well as the two external inputs. So it starts to function like an audio interface with two line inputs. Okay, so you get 12 channels of drums streaming into your DAW plus the two external line inputs streaming on another pair. 14 in total. All right. Here's the back of the 303. Again, standalone, completely piece of hardware, doesn't need to be connected to a computer. It's got analog left, right, out, and a phone socket, and USB, and MIDI as well. But if you, for example, think to yourself, well, look, I don't want the mixer, I don't want the synth, but I would love the drum box and the 303, then what you can do is this. You can, using the MIDI sockets, you can link them together, and then you connect the drum box to your DAW, and then you take the two analog outs from the TB3 and bring them in to the two external inputs on the drum box. And then the USB provides the 12 channels of drums and the 303 on the two external input channels, 14 channels in total into your DAW, 12 channels of drums and the two channels of the 303. And then you sync the whole lot to your DAW via USB. Yeah? yeah it's quite clever, huh? Uh, incidentally, there's the back of the vocal unit with the mic socket. I haven't looked into this a huge amount, but there it is. Okay. So it's clever, right? I mean, proper clever. Now, there's an even better twist, um, which is that either of these synths can use something called Roland Plugout. Now, the, both these synths are proper synths. They've got their own internal synth engine, but they can be used with this thing called Plugout. Let's look at that. All right. Now, plug out is um, actually a range of plugins that Roland is starting to produce. You've got at the moment three in the range: SH101, SH2, and the Promars. Now, these, as best as Roland can do in in terms of uh, the audio sound, faithfully reproduce these classic synths. Apparently, there are some missing features to the programming interface, uh, but they pretty much do what the originals do, and they sound like the originals. Now these are plugins. They run in your DAW, VST3 or audio units, right? And they can run, you can run as many instances of them as your computer can support. But if you've got the hardware synth, either the keyboard or the rack version, then as soon as you plug that into your computer via USB, then there's a communication between the plugin and the synth. Okay? First of all, the synth then controls the plugin. So the dedicated controls on the front of the synth are assigned to the parameters of the plugin synth. And any uh, hardware controls on the physical synth that are not controlling a parameter of the plugin, the green light on those goes out. So everything's clearly labeled, you know, it's not like with a generic controller, you're looking at the pots and going, well, what, what synth parameters does that control? Everything's labeled and only the lit buttons and faders, etc., and knobs control things on the, um, on the plugin. But it gets better than that. The synth, of course, has its own, the hardware synth has its own internal synth engine. Any patch that you create on the synth can be transferred into the plugin. But it also works the other way. Any patch you create on the plugin can be transferred into the synth and even better the entire engine model of the classic synth plugin can be transferred into the hardware synth the hardware synth then becomes a modeled version of these classic synths 
and you don't need the computer. You can just take it off and do a gig, and you transfer the SH101 engine into the synth, and it, you can take it out and play with it uh, without a computer or anything, and you've got an SH101 in hardware form. But the synth returns its in, retains its internal engine as well. There's a switch to switch between the plug-out uh, engine and the um, the original engine in the hardware synth, right? So let's just look at a quick video, and I'm not going to watch show you the whole thing, but this will just show you some key parts, and I'll stop to comment on things to draw your attention to stuff, right? The SH101 plug-out software synthesizer is the first plug-out synth from Roland, and is a complete reproduction of the iconic SH101 right down to the fine details and odd quirks that make it one of the most popular classic synthesizers of all time. It supports VST3 and audio units on both Mac and Windows. And looking at the interface, you'll see that it's all classic SH-101. Even with the ability to change the layout to... Okay, just stop there. Sadly, this thing slides in every time I mouse over. But as he drops the list down there from the plugin to change its appearance from gray to red to blue, Notice at the bottom of the list there, it says at the bottom of the list, System 1 Layout. Okay, it says System 101, grey, red and blue, and then at the bottom it says System 1 Layout. Now, he doesn't show it, this, but clearly you can select System 1 Layout, and then the plugin will have the appearance of the actual physical hardware synth, right? Color options that were only available as limited editions. The SH-101 is designed to work specifically with the System 1. Now you can still use it on its own and you can run as many instances as your computer allow, but with the System 1 you get dedicated controls that work in real time with the SH-101 plugin. Okay, notice on the synth to the left of his hand here, these controls are unlit in green. So, you see what I mean? Only the controls that are connected to the plugin are active and everything's clearly labelled. Okay, so... He carries on playing some sounds. Okay, next he's going to do the arpeggiator. And here's an SH-101 pluck sound. I'm going to use the System 1 arpeggiator. hardware. Okay, now he's going to talk about the connection between the hardware and the plugin. For instance, if you wanted to pull in the settings of the System 1 into the SH-101 plugin, you'd hit Get. If you wanted to send a preset into the System 1's memory banks, you'd hit the Send button. But most importantly, you can send the entire SH-101 model into the System 1 hardware so you can take it with you, play it anywhere without need for a computer. And here's how we do it. Okay, so now he's transferring the model of the SH-101, in other words, the engine that, that makes the 101 sound, imitates it into the hardware synth. So once the plug out is finished, the SH-101 model is now inside the System 1. So first, let's listen to the plug-in, still connected. Now let's close the computer, disconnect the USB, turn our local control on, and I'll switch over to the plug out, patch 4. And now we have the SH-101, no need for a computer, you can take it with us. Oh, that is incredible. Isn't that clever? Crikey. Um, I mean, that is just, what a clever idea. So. You can run the plugins in your DAW. Uh, you can control the plugins to make your patches with the hardware unit. If you don't have the hardware unit present, you can do it with the mouse and everything. But any patches you create in the plugins can be transferred into the hardware unit, individual patches. 
and they'll sound exactly the same as they sound in the plugin with the same sound as, as those classic synths. Or the engine from any of these classic model plugins can be transferred into the hardware synth. And any patches you create in the hardware synth with its engine can be transferred into the plugin. It's just really, really clever. But what's most exciting about it is that pretty it's pretty sure that Roland are going to carry on releasing more of their classic synths in this format. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, brilliant. You know what I mean? Okay. So, um, let's just finally look at the um, the drum box and 303 quickly. Here's the drum box. And again, I'm not going to play the whole video, but um, just draw your attention to draw your attention to some key things. With the drum box, you've got classic TR sequencing. You could also do the real time thing where you put it into like click, click. It's it's recording, and you the buttons then become the drums, and you can you know do a snare and kick by going like boom, tap, boom, or tap, boom, like that. You know, tap the sounds in rather than pressing the buttons to light up an individual drum. You know, if you don't know TR sequencing, you choose a drum, you put in, you light up the buttons where you want it to trigger, or you each button becomes a drum, and you listen to the click and play the drums in where you want them to sound, etc. You can do both. Right. <coughs> okay, so starting with the kick drum, put in the kick drum where you want it. Select the next drum. Select the next drum, etc. etc. Yeah, and this and the 303 has the last step thing if you don't want a 16 step pattern. Okay, um, it's got shuffle and all that. You've got 16 different kits, and you can mix and match drums from different kits, and you've got all the controls you know to do the do the parameters of the drums like on the originals. You can change a single instrument, like I said, mix and match drums. Um, yeah, also the kicker to say I have a built in compressor. Actually, I don't think, looking from the top there. Oh, actually, there's a picture, isn't there? Yeah. Can I look at this picture bigger? Yeah, let's just have a look at it. I don't know if the snare does have the snappy, does it? Oh, yeah, it does, yeah. So you got tune and decay. Yeah, tune, decay. And you got the snappy for the snare. You've got compressor for the, for the snare, compressor for the kick, and attack for the kick. Okay. And tune and decay for the others. Okay, um, here she's putting the reverb effect in on different steps. You can TR sequence the reverb on which steps you want the reverb to be, and then you can choose which drums will be affected by the reverb on those steps. And the same for the delay, yeah.
as I showed you when I talked about bringing the 303 into those two line inputs on the back and then streaming the whole lot out to your computer, the 303 on its own two channels and the 12 channels of drums coming into your DAW, 14 in total. What she's doing here is she's bringing in the synth, the System 1 synth in on the two analog inputs and she's step sequencing with the TR sequencer, she's step sequencing a sidechain effect on the incoming audio. And it's got the scatter effect built in. So does the 303, so does the mix. So the scatter effect is like a sort of, oh, it's a slicer type effect, I suppose. It just kind of repeats at, at different um, timings. So it's like a cross between a de delay and a slicer. Yeah, and all the rest of it, yeah? So, oh, this bloody JavaScript thing, get out of it! She can't forward the video. What idiot at Roland's web design didn't think, oh, well, they can't forward the video. Rrr. And this is, you know, where you tap the sounds in rather than stepping them in with the lit buttons, you know? Yeah, etc, etc. That's the drum box, and uh, check it out more in your own time. Uh, lots of videos out there on it. Okay, and then um, we'll just lastly look at the 303 very quickly, just to get a sense of it. Um, I don't think these t these demos are very good, to be honest. But um, here you go. <laughs> so. That sounds really good though, doesn't it? <laughs> Does say the envelope mod, you don't do it with the, with the knob, you do it with the touchpad. Lots of different sounds <coughs> you can switch between, or you know, besides the straight 303. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, really nice. Okay. So there you go. Do you understand how it all works now? The drum box, uh, Roland TR8, Tom Man. Let's just check in on Tom Man. Um, <laughs> is <laughs> cheaper than you think. It's 350. <laughs> 500 euros, 359, uh, 354 pounds for God's sake. This is a standalone drum box. 
with all that capability, but it connects to the computer and becomes an audio interface, streams 12 streams of the drums in, plus two external streams, etc. I mean, 200 quid for the 303, 212 pounds, I think it is at uh, Tom Man, TB3, let's just check it. There it is, yeah, 212 pounds for the TB3. 354 for the drum box. So for 570 quid, you've got the, the you've got hardware. Use it anywhere. Classic Roland drum machines and a 303, and the whole thing can connect your computer to provide individual streams for the drums and the 303 on the tracks of your DAW, and all synced to your DAW. I mean, it's just fantastic. The mixer isn't that much dearer, to be honest, either. Um, MX1, I think it is. Here we are. The mix performer is 425 which is very reasonable considering it acts as a DAW controller and it uh, as a USB mixer 18 channels of DAW coming in if it's in that mode and out to front of house or whatever you like um, and six inputs coming in analog and um, the system one system one is uh, well the synth is 347 yeah, and um, the System 1M rack, 425. I think it's incredibly well priced. So anyway, hopefully now you'll understand it. I think it's the best thing Roland have done since, well, the old days. Absolutely fantastic, and let's hope, uh, which I'm pretty sure we can expect, that the plug-out thing will provide us even more of Roland's classic synths um, there it is. I hope this has been useful to you. Um, and that is that. See you later. But Roland since then have released the System 8. And the System 8 is just, you can think of it as the bigger sister or bigger brother of the System 1. Okay. It's got more polyphony. Bigger synth, right. And it comes with an available library of contemporary sounds. There's actually quite a lot. But it also does the plug out stuff. But it's slightly confusing because it comes preloaded with. Um, I've got to go to a different page to find this out because, again, Ron's web design is so terrible. Um, it has these following plug outs as part of the, the, the System 8 system so to speak Jupiter 8 um, Juno 106 and the JX3P but these are not available as actual plugins I think they're preloaded into the synth when you buy it okay um, but also you can load into the engine part because there are three slots you can load in any of the previous plug outs the SH-101, the SH-2, the ProMars, and also now Roland have introduced the System 100 plug-out as well as a plug-in. But the other three for the System 8, the Jupiter, Juno, and JX-3P, are not available as plug-ins, apparently. Okay, it's all very confusing. You're going to have to check with Roland about that. Okay, but that's the System 8. Bigger version of the System 1. Okay. Okay, uh, then if we can find amongst all their ridiculous pages. Okay, here we are. Okay, then there's the SP404 sampler. Um, if you remember back in the day, was it the late 90s or the early 2000s? They released the SP, I'm sure it was called the SP404, which was a performance orientated sampler and sample mangling and loop based uh, sample thing. This is I guess the newer version of it, the SP404, and it's a performance orientated sample and loop player, right, with pads and all that, right? There's that. The three DJ controllers that I'm not going to look at. And then there's a new version of the drum box, the TR8S, and this is the same as the old TR8, except this time it comes preloaded with all the classic TR machines 909, 808, 707, 727 and the 606 Dramatics. It can also load samples, as far as I can tell from the utter confusion that is 
Roland's web pages. And in terms of the streaming via USB, if you remember the old TR8 allowed you to stream um, 12 drum channels independently and the two external audio inputs would also stream through on two additional channels by USB, giving you 14 total channels that stream to your door. Now, as far as I can understand it, and again, Roland's web design team are so useless, it's almost impossible to understand anything about their products. As far as I understand it, the TR8S does a similar thing, but there are less channels. I think there's only 12 channels that stream to your door in total. Okay, 11 individual drum channels and one external audio input channel. Okay, but you have to check all that out. So that's the new drum box. Then there's a new voice transformer, the BT4. You'll have to check that out yourself. Um, and that's your lot. But also on this page, well, apart from a pair of headphones, but also on this page, you'll notice there's all this System 500 stuff. Now, this isn't really Aera product, because the whole point about Aera stuff is that it has the USB out to stream from the product, either to your door via USB or to the mixer via USB. But this System 500 stuff is included on the Aera system page. For the only reason I can understand that it's here is because it's the whole point about Aera is it's like Roland giving you their old school style stuff. So the System 500 stuff is old school, so it's part of it. And you could bring it into the error system via the analog inputs on the mixer if you want, right? Okay, so the System 500 stuff, just to finish off, you can buy a single Euro rack preloaded with the five modules here. You can buy the rack independently. All it's got on the back is a power input and an on off switch. And you can buy the five modules independently. There's a dual VCO, a dual VCF, a dual VCA, a dual envelope, LFO, and there's an effect, so to, so to speak, unit um, with a five-stage phase shifter, analog audio delay, and a CV gate delay, and an LFO, right? So you can buy those independent, they're all analog, or you can buy them pre-filled in the rack. But further to that, there's these other system 500 units. Um, oscillator, filter, mix panel, etc., right? And you could put those in a second rack, and then you could have all this stuff in one rack and all this stuff in the other rack and patch it around and do the old school stuff, right? So that's your lot. New drum box, new voice transformer, new bigger System 8 synth, and the System 500 stuff, plus these DJ controllers, right? Okay, but as I say, it's almost impossible from Roland's websites which are awful to understand their products. So you really have to talk to Roland. They don't even give audio examples of the of the their models of the old polysynths that come with the System 8. It's just none of it's explained, none of it's shown you. It's a complete disaster. So but there you go, that's the um that's the state of the system today. All of it sounds great, though. It's just such a terrible shame that Roland's web design team is one of the, well, the worst I think I've ever seen in all my years, 30 years of web design um, and just being on the internet, you know. Anyway, there it is. There you go. That's the Aero system and the Aero products. And as I said, they really do sound good. Um, so check it out.